Thank you, Nelly. Thank you, boys. Ricky, Danny, and Mark. You've been the best and fairest award three times, 1968, 1971 and 1972. In 71 and 72, you play on a team coached by Neville Hogan. You dubbed the Hogan's Heroes. You win back-to-back -back premierships, and feet, I feet I'm sure you'd like to repeat here at Maine in 83. You receive an offer to go to the big time in Melbourne, but not with the club you ended up with. You are originally approached by Geelong. Can you tell us something of those circumstances? Pretty simple, but um, I was asked to go down there, and I trained down there for the complete pre-season. They, uh, after the pre-season was over, they said uh, we don't want you, so consequently, uh, I left. Same green. <laughs> you go on to play for North Melbourne. What were the, the circumstances leading up to your approach from North, having been asked? Not to hang around at Geelong. Well, initially, uh, the league that I played with in the country was, was uh, zoned to Geelong. Because North Melbourne was down the bottom of the ladder, they got the pick at the top country league. And um, after an initial three-year period, they changed it and it became North Melbourne zone. Uh, Geelong didn't need very many players. North Melbourne had to scrape the bottom of the barrel, so consequently I was down near the bottom of the barrel and uh, I got, got to North Melbourne. The Downing Thomases were around again when it became known you were going to Melbourne. You were not deterred, you were determined to make the grade. Your tremendous determination to succeed in football soon became evident in your play. The football public and critics were amazed how a man of your size, without the natural pace and spring of a Dempsey, Thompson or a Newman, overcame these obstacles, adapted to the pace of VFL football and became a great tap ruckman. Your first season at North Melbourne sees you play 11 senior matches. The same year a young Keith Gregg wins his first Brownlow medal. Here's a message from Keith Gregg. This is your life segment. Um, I know how you must be feeling Mick with all your people up there in Queensland. Uh, people down here in North Melbourne wish you to have a successful night with Nettie. Um, I must admit to the audience that a couple of times when I was, uh, had the good fortune to play with Mick, that uh, we'd go out on a Saturday night and Mick would usually have his pie or two. But what uh, a lot of people didn't know, that Mick could actually eat a pie without putting teeth marks in it. That was just a funny incident with Mick. Not that that's true, Nettie, I was only joking. I, I hope you forgive me. Uh, Mick, to us here at North Melbourne, was a guy that uh, everyone loved, and I'm quite sure the same feeling would be about Mick in Queensland. Hope you have a successful night, Mick, and that you and Nettie really enjoy yourselves. And who knows, uh, maybe your club, as North Melbourne this year, might play on a winning grand final side. All the best for tonight, Mick. ...for television, and uh, I'd like you all to show your appreciation because the boys put in a tremendous amount of work. I think your VFL career has many highs, but also has a few very big disappointments. Season 1974, another 11 senior matches in the home and away games. And during the form finals, your form is very good, but you miss a spot in the grand final. That side uh, was to meet Richmond, and Richmond go on to win. It's commented that Ron Baresi said at the time that uh, yourself and Doug Wade couldn't play together at full forward and forward pocket. I guess he thought uh, Doug was a bit slow. You might uh, run away from him or something. Any comment on that? Well, over the comments that he, he did make, he said that uh, having myself and Doug alongside each other, there wouldn't be enough pace about. But you now, Brass never ever had a sprint against me, so he never realised just how quick I was. <laughs> Season 1975. This is a big year for you. Along with Barry Davis and Keith Gregg, you play all 22 home and away matches. The only players at North to do so that season. You don't miss a berth in the grand final side this time, and in fact, they're one of, the, one of North's key men for the big match. This is your first VFL grand final appearance. 
How did you feel just before the match and as you ran on to the MCG? Well, it's uh, you know, something very hard to explain running on to the MCG before 123,000 people. But, uh, you know, possibly um, the best way that I can explain it to anyone. As each team runs out, all the supporters start cheering. There are races that uh, you run out, and the wind from those people cheering makes it just about impossible to get out the race. And there's uh, a real battle to push against that wind gutting down the tunnel. It certainly makes your hair stand on end at the back of your neck, and it is a tremendous feeling. And once the game gets going, you forget all about it. When you're successful, as we were in 1975, it's certainly a great feeling running around the ground holding that cup a lot. And then by sure, it's a great feeling the next four or five weeks as you've celebrated. <laughs> It made me lose my spot. <laughs> We've also got some highlights now of how North Melbourne defeated Hawthorne in that match. The scoreline was 19 goals 8 to 9 goals 13 as North win their first ever VFL Grand Final. Have a look. Towards the halfback flank, Dalton has the run of it. And in comes Kekovic. Woo! Almost lost his head. He's still going, Sam. He tries a short run across here towards David Dench. Dench is out on the half-back flank now. A big kick from Dench sends it to the half-forward flank. Light goes up from behind. Almost spectacular. But no, it's Rollings of Hawthorne coming in. Little Rollings takes his time. Tries to get it in towards centre half forward. Beats everybody. But Sam Kekovic. Kekovic over to Chisnell. He fumbles. He gets it over to Greg, however. Keith Greg going forward. A big kick into the forward zone. Raiders racing for it there. It couldn't beat him through for one behind. Cal. Good play as he gets the ball over the crosswalk. They've both been a stumbling or stumbling blocks. Wide out to Falcon. Falcon going after. In goes Tuck. And he's kicked it off the ground. The ball is out of bounds. A bounce. Kekovic is in there. The ball knocked away by Jones. In comes Falcon. Got the Drives it over the centre, up the woods in a half forward. Too high for Nolan. Javorski comes out. Lou pulls the one, but he won't give in. He goes after it again. It'll be a ball up. Nolan goes up there. Jones knocks the ball away. It's taken there by Falcon. He loses it, however. Here's slamming Sammy after it. Sammy Kekovic picks up. Goes towards the wing position. Kicks up towards the half forward flank. And he's put over the boundary line. And the kick will be given downfield. He's picked it up on the first bounce, but he's up into it. There's a go now for Chisnell towards the full forward zone and a good mark to the oh, in the back. pocket in the look pocket right going on down here look right Gilly they were going Helen Tom's there well, that's the first that uh, incident we've seen for the whole match Mike oh well they're leading for players this player is oh. down and they're not begging any pardons at the moment as the ball goes back and a mark to Blight Malcolm Blight is now on the back line oh Jones knocks it out of danger, but in comes Burns, it's taken there by Arnold Brightus, Brightus scoops it 